all you want is fairness and consistency. It's something that I've always said. So we're just trying to get the ball in the hands of our best player and allow him to go make a play in the, in the, in the, in the area on the floor where he's comfortable. Um, but, you know, again, not to take anything away from Denver. They're a hell of a ball club. They've been great all year, been great for a couple of a few years now. Um, they have a hell of a one-two punch and, and, and Joker and Jamal. Uh, I wish them nothing but the best. Mike Malone, happy for him and his staff. You know, they've done a phenomenal job of uh, just establishing a culture up there in Denver, uh, making that a tough place to play. Well-balanced roster, very, very well coached. Um, some great vets over there, some guys are going to get opportunity to get a ring, I think, for the first time. You know, DeAndre, Jeff Green, those guys. So kudos Ish Smith, like some guys that's been around the league a long, long time. And then Joker, getting an opportunity. Jamal, getting an opportunity to step out on the, the final stage and try to make something happen. So nothing but love and respect for the Denver Nuggets. Love the way they play and love what they're about. But, you know, we, always, we also saw ways that even though this is year one, you know, and this losing sucks. You know, we, um, I think we have opportunity to do something special here also. And uh, we just got to build off of this. Everything we put into turning this thing around, we got to not only sustain it, we got to take it to a higher level. And that's what this summer is going to be about. Just on that note, zooming out, the way the season started, trade deadline to where you are now, how would you summarize? I just think it was great. It was, it was, it was a, a, a nothing but growth, nothing but an education. And, you know, staying with it, trying to remain consistent. I told those guys their consistency of coming to the gym from the time where we had pieces, talented pieces on the roster, but yet and still some that didn't necessarily fit perfectly together to the point where we did have, find the right pieces and they fit, you know, smoothly. Um, the culture that was set, reset in terms of competitiveness, togetherness, accountability. You know, us coming to the gym each and every day trying to get better at something and being focused on getting better at something was nothing short of amazing. Um, it's just been a hell of a year. The support I got myself personally, my staff from Jeannie, Rob, I mean, it was just to go through some of those tough times early, you know, we don't get that support. We probably don't make it to this point. Um, but again, everybody pulling the rope in the same direction. Um, it's been, it was a, a very, very special year. Darvin, when um, <clears throat> LeBron, I think it was in Dallas, you know, goes to the ground, says he hears a pop, um, may, you know, meets with people, maybe he needs to have season ending surgery. At, at any point, did you envision being able to count on him for 48 minutes? A game. I mean, at that point, you might not have known if you'd get 40 minutes all season. Um, what, did, what did he have to go through to get back, and what did he give tonight? I think he just went through a rigorous uh, process of just round-the-clock treatment, exercises, bringing in different special, uh, foot, foot specialists um, to, first of all, confirm the fact that he couldn't, you know, damage the, the area any further. And, but to also to kind of retreat it, re-strengthen it, um, and make it and put him himself in a position where he could come back and join, which was then a newly formed group that had players in it that totally complemented his playing style and the style of play we wanted to have coming into this season. And so um, his ability to work through it, AD's ability to work through it. Um, just all of the injuries we had throughout the season and the guys missing different stretches, long stretches. Uh, I just think there was a belief there that um, this thing could really work. You know, we, we got some consistency in terms of people being in the lineup and guys uh, trying to get everything they could on the fly. You know, it wasn't a whole, didn't have a training camp, wasn't a whole with the new team from the deadline on. You know, obviously there's no training camp. There's no the practice time is limited because you're dealing with multiple injuries. So it was a lot of film study, a lot of walkthroughs. The shoot arounds pretty much became our practices, uh, regardless of who our opponent was, just trying to work on us and get better at what we needed to get better at and um, continue to fight through. And hopefully, you know, our, our leaders, our captains, Bron and AD would be available at the right time, and they were.
and that's just a bunch of work by you know our performance team and everybody around them. Just, just again, those guys being meticulous about not only just getting well, getting healed, but strengthening so we could make a push. Darwin, to stay smaller picture for a second. Obviously, the result was the same as games one through three, but you did change up the starting lineup, and now that you're immediately removed from it, um, what do you feel about that switch, and do you look back and wonder, could I use that at a different time of the series? Yeah. Um, you know, I believe we uh, we started the series with, Den uh, with Dennis in the lineup uh, in game one, um, coming off the Golden State. You know, you can go back, look at the lineups. I mean, we have, we were fortunate, you know, at the deadline to make a move that gave us a ton of serviceable players. You're always going to, you know, question whether or not you should have took a timeout or put the ball in someone's hands at a certain particular time in the game or switched up your defenses or this, that, and the third. Like, I just felt like, you know, no matter who we put in that lineup, you know, they were going to step up and, and, and give it their all, no matter what the results said. But this lineup that we finished with in particular, you know, obviously we want to just be aggressive, be physical. That's the reason Tristan came in. I thought he played huge in his time on the floor. Um, gave us some really good, in, inspiring minutes, um, high-spirited minutes. Uh, thought, you know, those guys, are, that's a tough – tough task, you know, trying to slow down Joker, trying to slow down Jamal, but, you know, I thought our guys, you know, they, they, they tried their best, you know, that starting lineup, each starting lineup that we had out there, they didn't go out there to fail, you know what I mean, it just things happen the way they happen during the course of a basketball game, and, um, and kudos to those guys who were removed from the, you know, in and, and D'Lo's case, removed from the starting lineup, and then in Vando's Case didn't get a chance to play tonight, but those guys were nothing short of professional. Um, understood, you know, did what they needed to do in the restructured part of the rotation, and um, everybody was supportive. Really wanted to come out and get this win tonight, and, um, and I thought we fought, fought as hard as we could fight. Darvin, uh, even though it was a sweep, you guys were in all four fourth quarters, uh, you know, at one point it was a one possession game in, in each of them. Uh, what, what's the key for this group moving forward to, you, you said, to kind of take that next step? What, what, what do you think that key is for you guys to be able to execute on a stage like this and, and come out winning those games? I just think, again, um, the phrase for me is self-inflicted wounds. You can't have those. And that's, that, you know, being good in transition defense, not fouling, not get pushing them to the bonus, getting a rebound, boxing out, you know, keeping them off their offensive glass, not allowing them to get those second, third, fourth chances. Um, and then on our side, not turning the ball over and making layups. I don't know, uh, I don't think coverages or adjustments have anything to do with that. That's just playing harder, playing better. Um, I thought the third quarter, you know, we, 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 it was twofold. We missed a ton of point blank shots and we allowed them to get really active on, on their offensive glass. When we would stop them and then they get another crack at it and another crack at it. And now instead of getting a rebound, you're giving up threes. And so, and the sign of a great team is you make any mistake, they're going to make you pay for it. Um, and they did just that. So I think going forward, we have to come in with a focus on being determined going into next year of controlling what we can control, giving ourselves every chance to win by doing the little things. You know, again, being great in transition, showing our hands, being disciplined, um, coming up with rebounds, defensive rebounds in particular, playing with pace, consistent pace, not turning the ball over, and making the shots we're supposed to make. Durbin, E.D. didn't get going into the fourth quarter. Was that a case of LeBron just being so forceful, or was it a case of you guys not looking for A.D. more than enough? I mean, during the flow of a game, we, it was a lot of several play calls, and LeBron had it going, and 
you know, a screen and rolling. He had some looks that he wasn't able to, to, to finish. But at the end of the day, he competed. Um, he kept at it, and he had some good moments late. Uh, but no, nah, I mean, we, we the way we play is the equal opportunity offense. And, you know, guys going to want to push a guy on. They see Brian going and, and, and making shots. Then, nah, no one, that's the beautiful thing about this, this group that we assembled. Um, no one is, no one is, is, is begging for touches. Like, like they, they see one of their teammates that's cooking, and, they, and they're going to continue to feed them. And so, um, it's just, I think, more about happenstance. It wasn't anything deliberate. Hey, Darvin, um, you clearly poured your heart out into this this season. What are the emotions going through your head right now, and, and what did you tell the guys in the locker room immediately after the game? I just told them to take some time to take stock of what this meant. You know, I thank them again for the season, for supporting me, for communication, uh, giving it a chance to work by buying in. Um, and then come everyone coming in and being having a focus to try to get better. Uh, from a mental, spiritual standpoint, you know, I, I, I have the best job in the world. I thank God every day. It's tough to really be upset. I'm, I'm extremely disappointed, but I'd be really distraught and upset if we didn't come out and compete. You know, no one wants to get swept. Don't, 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 you know, get me confused. Like, no one, no one, especially within myself, within that locker room, everyone we have in our building, no one wants to go out like this. But the thing that gives me uh, joy is the fact that we competed every night. We competed every game in this series. Um, and I just told the guys to take stock of what this meant, what this feeling feels like right now, what we went through in an entire season, and what we had to do to get to this point. Now, investigate the process. You know, try to strengthen yourselves, whether it's your game, your body. Understand what we're trying to do moving forward in terms of reestablishing the winning culture around here. Uh, to go from not being thought much about to start the season to now finishing in the top final four. Coming in the next year, there's going to be expectations, as it should be, within this organization and, and what this organization is meant to the NBA and to the world of sports as a whole. You know, each and every individual, each and every player, coach, any person, front office person, any person working for our organization, we got to see how we can take this momentum and take it to an even higher level to the point where we're the ones that's outside celebrating. We're the ones that's on our way to that final stage of playing in the NBA Finals. I didn't come here to have wins, more wins than losses, or make a playoff round one, or make a playoff run. I came to win. I've been fortunate enough, blessed enough to, to, to experience winning at all levels and the highest level time and time again. And so my focus is all there. That's my focus. Um, my, my question is sort of about that guy and, and, and Rui and D'Lo. <laughs> you, you mentioned Denver's culture over there. They've had a core that's kind of come up and gone through the ups and downs of the playoffs. Um, for these young guys, how much is how, how important will this be to their development and what do we want them to get out of it? I think it's going to be a feeling that um, they're going to be searching for. You know, those these guys being so young in their careers, like you, you, once you get a taste of winning and you get a taste of what this feels like going, and you know there's 26 other teams sitting at home and you're one of the last few playing, like that just makes you want to work that much harder, tighten up your game that, that much more, and just totally embrace and dive into the culture culture that we reestablish of competitiveness, togetherness. Those gentlemen, Rui, Austin, they work feverishly on their games and they watch film constantly, tirelessly. And um, they, you see it translate on the game floor. And so um, I love them to death. I appreciate them believing in what we were pushing, myself and my staff. And we worked our asses off to try to reestablish a winning culture around here. And I think we've done that. So now to let it all go down the drain over a summer um, by playing too much golf would be disappointing. And I'm only talking about one guy to my left. <laughs> no, they, they, I love these dudes, man. These are my guys. I mean, starting with this guy right here, Mr. Fearless himself. You heard enough of me. Talk to my guys. Thank you.